<laughs> but uh, I remember being being in Bible college, and uh, I was working the second shift from four to, four to midnight, and it was a Bible study night. But I just wanted to get to God's house. I just wanted to get to church. So I told my foreman, because there was about four of us Bible school guys working at the same place, I said, do you, do you mind if I just take off early and go to church? He goes, no, Jonathan. So, and I mean, the roads were bad. There was so much snow. It was like a blizzard. But I'm, I'm driving from work back to the dorm. And then this bowling alley's parking lot was filled with cars. Yeah. You know, this tavern's parking lot was filled with cars. And I go to the church, and the church is closed. <laughs> and I'm like, so I thought, you know, it's, this flesh kind of does whatever it wants to do. You know what I'm saying? So, but I'm glad Amen. we wanted to be in God's house tonight. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. There's, a, there's a church in Nancy, Michigan, you know, where they have the church sign outside. And, uh, but this sign says, the message is inside the building. You know, it's not here on the sign, it's inside. So I'm glad you're in God's house. Good things happen to you in God's house. Mm -hmm. So let's all stand, shall we? I appreciate the faithfulness of Brother and Sister Prusa and their desire to establish your church here for the glory of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Amen. And uh, this is the most important building in Kenosha. Amen. More important than Culver's. <laughs> More important than pick and save. Amen. Because in this building, you can have your marriage repaired. Amen. Amen. In this building, you can have your sins forgiven. Yeah. Amen. In this building, you can receive the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Glory, glory. Amen. In this building, you can come discouraged and leave encouraged. Amen. Yes. In this building, you can come broken and leave repaired. Glory to God. Amen. Because with God, all things all right. are possible. Amen. All right. Let's open up our Bibles to two passages of Scripture. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. And 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 18. <clears throat> Hebrews 6 18 says that by two immutable things, the word immutable means unchangeable, Amen. that by two unchangeable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Because it's impossible for God to lie, we have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us. Amen. Then it says in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56, it says, Blessed be the Lord who hath given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses, his servant. Amen. Not one word has failed Amen. of all his good promise, which he promised through Moses, his servant. Let's pray one more time, shall we please? Again, Jesus, we thank you for your people, for your wonderful spirit that is here, for your word that can feed, nourish, and edify. Let that happen tonight, God, with your help. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated this evening. God is omnipotent. How many times have we said, God can do anything? But you know, if there's one thing God cannot do, 
God cannot lie. Amen. Amen. He cannot lie. Now we in our flesh, we can lie. We do lie. We will lie. But God cannot lie. One scripture in Titus says, He is the ever truthful God. Ever truthful. He can do anything, but He cannot lie. Now, there are two factors that cause doubt in Christians' lives the fact that we read the Word of God, heaven's going to pass away, earth is going to pass away, even tongues are going to cease. But yet, sometimes we cannot really believe the Word of God. Why is that? Because there are two factors that cause doubt. The first one is not taking God at His Word and accepting it for what it says. We read it and we say, no, that just cannot happen. We, it, 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 it just can't be. The second factor that causes doubt is focusing more on the external circumstances mm -hmm. than what the Word of God says. Okay, come on. We look at everything Amen. except what except God that. says. Yes. Now the Bible says God is light. In Him there's no darkness at all. God never says anything with the double meaning. He never said, says things that, that, that gives him a back door where he can back out of it and say, I yes, didn't really yes, mean that. Yes. There's no deceit in God. There's no shadiness in God. Well, we worship you. He's a God of truth. Yes. Amen. There's so much lying today <laughs> in the world. I don't care what the job is. There's so much corruption. But God is right, and in him there's no darkness at all. And in and in 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56, when God called Israel out of Egypt, right? when God called Israel out of Egypt, he said, I'm going to give you a, a pillar of fire by night, and I'm going to give you a cloud by day. He said, your clothes will never wear out. He said, I'm going to give you manna every morning. Mm -hmm. And the Bible just simply says, but that everything he promised, not one word failed of all the good promise which he promised to Moses, his servant. Do you know why it happened? Because God can not lie. Heaven's going to pass away. Earth is going to pass away. But the word of the Lord shall never pass away. Yes. Even tongues are going to cease. Glory to God. Now for all of us older folks here, Remember, you would tell your friends you were going to do something for you? And know what they said? Are your fingers crossed? <laughs> See, some of you are older, I know. Because when your fingers are crossed, it was kind of legal to lie. <laughs> I said, Why did you, where did that come from anyway? Are your fingers crossed? But I want you to know when God speaks to us, His hands are right out here. Amen. His fingers are not crossed. Hallelujah. Amen. Because God can not lie. Amen. Now, I've been lied to by used car salesmen. I've been lied to by insurance people. I've been lied to by individuals that have sold me other products. But folks, when you read this book, I remember living in, in uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin for a number of years. And... and Twice every hour on the radio, they had what was called Accu Weather. The word Accu was short for accurate. Accu Weather. Like one man said, I always believed the weatherman until I shoveled six inches of partly cloudy off my driveway. <laughs> but, but churches are planning next summer's Church picnic and they pick up the farmer's almanac and says, Well, on August the 14th it's going to be sunny, so let's do it. But hey, everybody, you can believe this book more than you can believe farmer's almanac, right. more than you can believe yes. the weatherman. Yes. Amen. All right? <laughs> but at least in Eau Claire, they were honest enough to say, We messed up so many times, they took the word at you away. They just said, We're going to give you the weather now. I, I think God smiles, not a weatherman. But anyway. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing. All right. 
Doubt comes because we can't take God at his word. Doubt comes because we look at external circumstances more than we look at the word of God. But the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and the word hearing means listening. Listening. That's why for any parent here that has young children, and you're talking to them, and you say, do you hear your mom? But then you say, are you listening? Mm -hmm. That's why if you want to sleep in church, sleep during the music, but wake up for the preaching. All right? Right. Because faith does not come by music. <laughs> faith comes by hearing the word of God. Yes, yes. Yeah. I heard an evangelist say, boy, he said, man, we had the best revival, Brother Mackey. And I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I was there two weeks and only preached one night. I thought, wow. <laughs> and folks, if God wants to move, I'll let him move. Amen. But folks, there's no substitute for the word of God. No. All right. Amen. Now, there are, there are, you can walk into a, a bookstore, go to the religious section. I know there's no Bible bookstores anymore, which is really sad. Mm -hmm. But you can go into Barnes & Noble and there's books on Christianity, books on faith, books on, on the spirit, books on heaven, books on every religious subject. But this is the best book to read when it comes to faith. Yes. Amen. Right here. Yes. The best book to read when it comes to faith. Now, let's look at the Gospel of John, chapter 11. John, chapter 11 in our Bibles. John chapter 11 and verse 14. John chapter 11 and verse 14, it says, Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. Verse 17, Then when Jesus came, he found that he had already lain in the grave for four days. So, Jesus got there four days late. Four days he had already been in the, in the grave. Verse 21, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, if you had been here four days ago, our brother would not have died. Our brother wouldn't have died. Jesus saith unto her in verse 23, Thy brother shall live again. Yes, yes. Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead yet, shall he live. Now it's amazing. You know, Martha said, Lord, if he had been here four days ago, our brother would still be alive. And I know we're going to see him in the resurrection at the last day. Now Martha's like you and me sometimes. We have faith for past things and faith for, faith for future things. Yeah. Now how many here really believe that the waters of the Red Sea parted? Yeah. Would you raise your hand? Very how nice. many here saw them part? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Do you know why you believe it? You read it yeah. in this book. How many here believe the walls of Jericho fell down? Amen. Yes! We read it in this book! Faith for past things. How many here believe Jesus is coming again? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's our lively hope. Yes. Boy, we know he's coming again. Yes. And we know that the waters of the yes. Red Sea parted. Yes. But Martha didn't say, no, Lord, I can go, I, Lord, I know he can go to the tomb right now and say, Lazarus, come forth. She didn't say that because she didn't really believe it could happen that day. Lord, if you had been here four days ago, but I know we're going to see him in the future. But know what Jesus said under her in verse 25? I am the resurrection and the life. Not the I was. He's not the I will be. He is the great I am. Now, he can do it today. That means you can have the Holy Ghost today. You can be healed today. Yes. You can be delivered today. 
Oh Lord, if you, Lord, if you had just been here a few days ago, I would. Oh, folks, He is the great I Am because whatever God can do, folks, He can do it today. He's the ever-present God, the ever-present God. Aren't you glad He's the? Aren't you glad He's the great I Am? Not the great I was, and not the great I will be. Now let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 8. Matthew, chapter 8, and verse 5. Then when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. The word beseech literally means begging him. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great what? Faith. 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 No, not in Israel. All because the centurion said, Lord, speak the word only. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Verse 13, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the self same hour. Self same hour. Now, in my travels in apostolic churches, know what I've discovered? That some people put more faith in the way the message is presented yeah. <laughs> than the message itself. Yes. Amen. You know? You're right. You know, some individuals have style over substance. Amen. I'd rather have substance over style. Right. Absolutely. Right. Right. You know? You know, and, and so and, and the Saturian said, Lord, just speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Yeah. So Jesus said, Go thy way as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. What did the centurion say? God, come on now, really preach it. Come on now, really. I mean, you get with it when you say that. Woo! Go my way! Yes, sir. My servant is here. Yeah. I want that sweat flying, finger pointing, leg kissing preacher. Really? Absolutely. There's me. And, uh, I remember going to a, to a conference one time, I, I, starting Wednesday night. And I got there on Thursday morning and saw a young man in the, in the hallway of the auditorium. He said, praise the Lord, Brother Mack. I said, praise the Lord. He said, were you here last night? I said, no, I just got here. He said, boy, did he preach! Oh, I wish I was here because I, every time I'm in church, it seems like I'm doing the preaching, you know. Like, <laughs> said, boy, did he preach! I said, really, man, I wish I was here. I said, I said what was his text? <laughs> he said, oh. <laughs> I said, I can't remember. And I said, well, what did he preach about? Habit, so winning? He said, I can't remember. But he was great, though. <laughs> but see, boy, some people put more faith in how it is presented than the word itself. That's why people said, this is my favorite preacher. This is my favorite preacher. And just... Just thank God for preachers. Amen. 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 They will give you Amen. the word of God. Amen. The word of God. Right? Now, so just speak the word only. <laughs> speak the word only. So Jesus said, All right, go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done on you. This, did the servant just say, Lord, I mean, could you just say it one more time? Okay, all right, all right, go thy way, as thou hast believed. So, Lord, I, I know it sounds good, but say it one more time. Go thy way as a husband, we shall be it on to you. But listen, speak the word only. Folks, I mean, in 2022, we have the written word. Yes. Do we still listen to tapes? We have the tape word. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't even know the name of all this, all this technological equipment. I mean, we have the word on our phones, yes. do we not? Yes. 
Like I mean, pleasure. come on, folks. We have so much word. Amen. And we can listen to it. You know, hit the hit the repeat. Yes, hit the repeat. Hit the repeat. We hear it, we hear it, and we hear it. But for, there's just something about, Lord, what 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 is it that causes me to doubt the word of God? But we have the read word. We can read it over and over and over again and meditate on it. Yeah. Now let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 5. We just speak the word only. Sometimes we wonder, how many times do we need to hear it before we believe it? Yeah. All right. In Luke, chapter 5, verse 4. Now when he had left off speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a draught, or for a haul of fish. For a haul of fish. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. We've worked hard. And have taken nothing. Right. Now, Peter could have said, Lord, things you have said in the past have made sense. But oh Lord, this doesn't make any sense. I'm a fisherman. I know how to fish. And there's just, there's just no fish tonight. He said, Lord, we have toiled all night. And Peter could have said, Lord, I just don't see how it's going to do any good to put my net in the water one more time. Yes. And Lord, I really don't feel like putting my net in the water one more time. <laughs> And Lord, I just don't think it's going to do any good. Because we in our flesh are influenced by what we think, what we feel, and what we see. Because yes. as an evangelist, I hear people say, I don't think I can receive the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I, just don't, I just don't feel like God is here. I just don't see how God can help in this situation. But you know what? The challenge of the Word of God is not to go by, not to be influenced by what you think and feel or see. But that's, Peter said, Lord, never, that's what I think, what I feel, what I see. At thy word, I'm going to get down my net. And that is why, folks, because he had faith in what the word of God said. Yes. Speak the word only. Yes. Sometimes I think, you know what the answer to this is? The answer is, yes, Lord. the answer is, because right now a lot of people believe their doubts, and doubt the word of God. Mm -hmm. No, we need to do. We need to doubt our doubts and believe the word of God. Yes. Doubt your yes. doubts. Yes. Don't believe your doubts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you when you need a job and, and the enemy comes, do you understand the devil's a liar? Mm -hmm. a li God cannot lie, and the devil is the father of lies. Yes. He lied in the first first chapter of the in the very first book of the Bible. Yes. Anything that comes into your heart and mind and spirit that is contrary to the word of God, the enemy puts it there. He does not want you to be healed. He does not want you to receive the Holy Ghost. He does not want you to repent. He does not want you to go to heaven. He wants you to go to hell. That's what he wants. He's a liar. That's right. So you need a job and you're praying, God, help me find a job. And the devil comes and says, you know, God's not going to help you find a job. And you kind of say, yeah, I guess I believe that. No. Listen, folks, when the enemy comes in and says, God's not going to help you find a job, you need to say, I doubt that. Because God's going to help me get a job. Yes. You're never going to get the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I believe that. No, no. You're never going to get the Holy Ghost. I doubt that. Yeah. I'm going to get the Holy hey, Ghost. Absolutely. Folks, we need to doubt our doubt come on, come on. and believe what the Word of God says. Because, yes. folks, the Bible says to fight the good fight of faith, faith. to Amen. pick up the shield of faith, because you have a battle on your hands whenever you want to receive anything from God. But to doubt our doubts, all right, and, and to believe the Word of God. I've been in revival services where individuals just get discouraged at the altar when they need the Holy Ghost and they just walk out the door and go sit in their car. Folks, they don't get the Holy Ghost sitting in the front seat of their car either. No. They may as well come into the house of God where it's warm and there's some worship. But see, yes. but that's what doubt does. Yeah. Doubt just doubt, doubt just somehow washes out our mind where we cannot really grasp what the Word of God is saying to us. The devil is a liar. 
So we need to doubt our doubts and believe the word of God because God cannot lie. Now let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 2 Kings. To the book of 2 Kings in our Bible. 2 Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. And verse 24. Verse 24. It says, And it came to pass after this that Ben Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. Now there's only, there's only one verse on the word besieged Samaria. But According to historians, the siege lasted for two years. Wow. Two years. So they could not go out and harvest the crops they had. They could not go out and plant new crops. So for two years, for two years, and there was a great famine in Samaria. And it was so severe, behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for 80 pieces of silver. 80 pieces of wow. silver. And the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung, which is simply a wild vegetable that grew in that region, was for five pieces of silver. I mean, it was so severe that a donkey's head was so for 80 pieces of silver because there's nothing, there's nothing like good old donkey head soup. <laughs> <laughs> good old deep boiled donkey eyes. Royal donkey tongue. <laughs> Sweet and sour donkey ears. God forbid. Folks, that's what they were doing. Folks, because of the famine. Now, this is showing us the influence of external circumstances. Because external circumstances really do affect our faith. And while this was going on, it says in verse 26, and as the king was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord doesn't help you, how can I help you? Out of the barn floor, out of the wine press. But then the king realized there was something really urgent in her cry. Yeah. And the king said, What aileth thee? And she answered, The woman said, this woman said unto me, Give me thy son, that we may eat him today, and we eat my son tomorrow. So they took her son, killed him, we boiled my son, and did eat him. That's how severe it was. It turned to cannibalism. And we, we did eat him. And I said unto her the next day, Give me thy son, that we may eat him. But she had hid her son. Folks, these are severe circumstances. And when the king heard this, he rent his clothes and what he had sackcloth on his body. And then the king is really upset and he said, God do so and more to me if the head of Elisha, the prophet, shall stand on his head. So he's going to take, tell someone to go kill the prophet. But Elisha sat in his house and the elders sat with him and the king sent a man from before him, but ere the messenger came to him, Elisha said to the elders, See ye how the son of a murderer has sent to take away my head? Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Is enough the sound of the master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked, behold, the messenger came down unto him, and he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord, what what should I wait for the Lord in my long, any longer? So now this man comes and they hold him. And verse 7, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Amen. You know what? God cannot lie. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Verse 2, then the Lord on whose hand he leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? He was going, ha, 
Do you realize a donkey's head is sold for 80 pieces of silver? And a woman and a, a woman killed her baby and ate her baby. Ha! If God opened up the windows of heaven, do you think this is really going to be? And the prophet said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but you're not going to eat of it. Yeah. You're going to see it, but you're not going to taste it. Yes, yes. So that night, all right, there were four lepers outside the gate. And they said, if we go into the city, we're going to die because there's no food. If we stay here, we're going to die. We'll go to the camp of the enemy, and maybe they'll give us something to eat. When they went to the camp of the enemy, God made the noise of a mighty army. And the enemy said, yeah, they've hired another country to help them. Let's get out of here. And they left. And they left all their food, they left all their weapons, they left everything. Praise the Lord. And so here are the lepers, man. They're, they're eating grapes, and they're eating chicken legs, and, you know, I mean, drumsticks, I mean, you know. And, and, and they're saying, listen, it's not going to be well with us. We need to go back and tell them that the, end of the Syrians are gone. So they go back and tell the king, they said they're gone. Even the king didn't believe them. So the king sent a little spy committee out there because they thought they were going to be ambushed by the Syrians. And when they realized, hey, they are gone. They, in the middle of the night, they went out and spoiled, all right? And they went out and spoiled, all right, the, the whole camp, which means they gathered in all. They went and gathered everything that was there. So it says in verse 16, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of God. <coughs> Do you know why? Because God can not lie. So in, the, so in the morning, all these wagons of food are outside the gate. And so the king tells his right hand man, the one who said, ha! If God even opened up the windows of heaven, this thing shall not be. He said, you open up the gate. And the Bible says, all right, and the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. But the people were so hungry, when he opened up the gate, they knocked him down and trampled him to death. Verse 18, and it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. I just heard on the radio there was some soccer game in Cambodia or I can't remember what country. But, but for some reason there was a stampede and seven people were trampled to death. Yeah. So this can happen. But the people knocked him down and they trampled him to death. That is why what we see should not be the thing in influencing our faith mm -hmm. and whether God is, is true or whether God is not true. Because do you know what, folks? Unbelief, unbelief is ruthless. Yes, it is. Unbelief will knock you down and kick you. Unbelief. And then, and I, I've been evangelizing for 48 years. All right, people sit out there that need the touch of God, need the renewing, need the Holy Ghost. But because of unbelief, they will not come to the altar. They sit back there. They see other people receive the Holy Ghost. They see other people get renewed, but they never taste it for themselves. Mm, because unbelief will kill your relationship with God. Yes, it will. That is why you need to doubt your doubts and believe the word of God. Amen. And that is why the challenge to every saint of God is, don't let unbelief and doubt ever hold you in the pew. Don't be one of those that just look at it and look at it. And look, boy, I wish I could. No, I don't want to just read about it. I just don't want to hear about it. I Amen. want to taste it. Yeah. I want to taste the renewing. I want to taste the victory. Yes. I want to taste the power. I want to taste the deliverance. I want to taste the hope that we can have in God. Now, 
I was uh, I was at a church in, in Texas, and back then when they had five night revivals, you know, some men would start on Wednesday, go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But then other men would start on Sunday morning, go Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Because like most churches, there's more people there on Sunday than on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So on Sunday, their, their biggest crowd is there, and so maybe if they hear me preach, they might like me and come back on Monday or Tuesday. All right. But anyway, so, so, so the first Sunday, first Sunday morning, it was glorious. I mean, there was maybe 300 and some people in this church. God filled seven people with the Holy Ghost Sunday morning. All right. But as I was praying, there was a man in the very last row because I watched him when I was preaching and the Holy Ghost was on him. And I went back there and he was kneeling in the last pew and he was weeping and crying and trembling. I said, come on, let's raise our hands. That's God. He wants to be good. Don't resist, just yield. But he would not. He would not. So I went and prayed with some other people. Mm. All right, and then after church, I'm with the pastor on the pulpit, on the platform, and I said, sir, I said, that man in the last row, I said, I mean, if he, if he had just yielded, God would have filled him with the Holy Ghost. And he said, Brother Mackey, he said, that's wrong. He's been seeking the Holy Ghost for 20 years. 20 years. All right. And he doesn't even come to the altar anymore. And when he did come to the altar, people wouldn't even pray with him anymore. I mean, folks, that's a long time. You figure three services a week. Mm-hmm. You know, that's about 150 services a year. All right, times 20? That's 3,000 services. So I said, thanks for telling me that. I run out into the parking lot. It's, it's in the month of April or May. It's sunny out. And you know, there's 300 people and cars going anywhere, everywhere. And I'm standing there, and who comes by but Ron? I tapped on his hood. I said, Ron, I want to encourage you. I said, God really touched you today. I said, and, and I said, uh, I guess you've been seeking the Holy Ghost for a while. You know, I'm not going to emphasize the 20 years for a while. You know, but I said, Ron, I want you to come back tonight. And I said, really, come with faith. I said, God, yes. that's the touch of God that you felt. So I want you to come tonight with faith. Come to the altar. Just yield to God. And Ron was there. The same spot in the last pew. But I watched him from the platform. He didn't clap his hands. He didn't raise his hands. He didn't worship. He didn't even come to the altar. In fact, I didn't even have a chance to pray with him. He just turned and walked out. You know, and, and, and that made me feel bad. It really did. But anyway, so we had another great service Sunday night, but now it's Monday night. And if you think, Pastor in the Home Mission <laughs> Church, that you go from 40 on Sunday morning yeah. to 15 yeah. on Monday or Tuesday, you ought to go from 300 to 130. Yeah. You know. All right. And I remember the pastor saying, boy, where is everybody? You know? I mean, a lot of people must have second shift jobs or night school or something, you know. So, so it was Monday night. And I'll tell you what. The song we should have sung to open the service was, Oh, when the saints... Come dragging in, <laughs> oh, when the saints come dragging in. Uh, because you can tell it was Monday night, and I understand people work all day. All right? I, I understand that. All right. And so, so anyway, and, and, and obviously, obviously, the worship leader was feeling the same way. So, 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 so he, he wasn't very enthusiastic or, po- or positive. You know, and so he did his thing, turned it over to the pastor, and the pastor didn't say much. He said, all right, now we're going to turn it over to Brother Mackey. So I get up there and I preach it, and you know, those saints, they're they're sitting out there. Now, I I think I might have told this church before, I never perspire or sweat when I preach. I don't. My heartbeat's only about 65. I mean, I've been in churches where the song leader, the song leader reads one song and the sweats just pour it out of them. But folks, I do not sweat. Except Amen. when there's resistance. 
So if I, if, if Brother Christopher ever has me back and I'm sweating, it's not my fault. It's your fault. <laughs> ah, okay. That's right. Really? Because you're resisting me. But folks, and I was up there with the help of the Lord, and I mean, sweat was pouring off of me. All right. So I said, all right, everybody, let's stand. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands and worship God. So, <laughs> thank you, ladies. <laughs> I like that. You're listening to me, all right? <laughs> and the man would see you. All right, all right. Okay. So, and, and so, so the people stood. I don't know if they raised their hands or not, but I raised mine. I raised mine. And I opened my eyes and looked. And you know who's at the altar? Ron is at the altar. Amen. Ron. And you know, and listen, your mind is faster than that computer you've got, right? Yeah. Just like that. Boom, boom, boom. And right away I thought, oh no, not tonight. <laughs> that thought, I'm honest, that thought, not tonight. There's no spirit here. It's dead in here tonight. Why didn't he come last night? It's... But it was gone. So finally, Ron's right there. And they looked at the congregation and I said, no, folks. Faith has brought Ron to this all. Amen. Amen. Because I want to say, it sure wasn't your worship. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it, but I didn't say it. I said, faith has brought Ron to this altar. Amen. And, and he, was, he was quiet. He was just kneeling like that. And so I said, Pastor, come on. We're going to pray for Ron. And I said, Ron, I want you to read that. Because of your faith, God's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And I could tell that, you know, the pastor wasn't real excited about coming. But, so I said, now, church, let's pray. I could tell they weren't going to pray. They were going to watch. But anyway, so, okay, I laid hands on Ron. And as soon as I laid hands on him, the Holy Ghost fell on him. And he began to speak with other tongues. I took the microphone, put it in front of Ron's mouth. The speaking in tongues came through the speaker system. The whole church started dancing, running, jumping over pews, swinging from the chandeliers. And I just wanted to say, ah, sit down. You weren't with me anymore. I'm the one who should be running, not you. Right. Because all I could think was 20 years, three services a week. Oh, come on. Now let's look at the book of Psalm 78, verse 19. Psalm 78. Psalm 78. Verse 19, this is God's natural people, the Jew. Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smote the rock, and the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? That, and this, yeah, after everything God did for Israel, bringing them to the wilderness, now they say, come on, can God furnish a table? Can God give bread? Can God provide flesh? You know what the attitude of that church in Texas was? Can God? Really, that's how it was. Can God? Ron, 20 years. Can God? But, it's, but then it says, and they speak against God. Right? In verse 19. Because that's what unbelief does. It's actually taking sides against the word of God. Verse 21. Therefore the Lord heard this and was angry, wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger came up against Israel, because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Folks, unbelief really, really grieves God and stops God. Can God. That is why, folks, you cannot be influenced by external circumstances. I don't care how long the siege has been there. I don't care how long the battles have been going on. Instead of saying, can God, it's so good to say, God can. God will. God does it. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's what he does. Amen. God can. God can. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 14 in our Bibles. Matthew chapter 14. 
Matthew chapter 14 and verse 24. Matthew 14 and verse 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves. For the wind was contrary. All right? And this, and it was in the fourth watch of the night. So this was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. in the morning. So it definitely it is nighttime. In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And here's Peter. Boy, Peter's a wonderful Bible character, you know. <laughs> Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. On the water. And the Lord gave him a one-word sermon. Come. How many words do you have to hear before you come? The Lord said, come. To Peter said, yeah, Lord, give me that finger point in preaching. Say, oh, Peter, come on, my brother. No. One word, come. And you know what? And when Peter was come down out of the ship, this is amazing. He walked on the water. Woo! To go to Jesus. But, see that? I, have a, I'm, I want to preach a message on the word but in the Bible. All right? But, when he saw the wind, know what he did? He took his eyes off the word and put his eyes on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Because he took his eyes off the word and put his eyes on the circumstances. Amen. Man, I'm in the middle of a storm. I can't walk on water. But see, he began to sink. Are you glad for the mercy and grace of Almighty God? Yes, yes. We're sinking and he still reaches out and he grabs a hold of us. And he says, why? why did he doubt? Why did he have such little faith? Hallelujah. But that's how it is with us, yes. folks. I, You know, every one of us has storms in our lives. Amen. We do. We're not exempt. I've said it here before. We still get flat tires and mosquito bites after we get the Holy Ghost. All right? We're not always talking in tongues, jumping over three peas. All right? But, folks, but when the Word of God speaks to you, don't let doubt, fear, and unbelief hold you in that chair. Amen. Amen. Well, you stand back there and you see, yeah. you see it happen, but don't you ever want to taste it for yourself? Mm. I'm it. If you need the Holy Ghost tonight, God wants you to taste it. Yeah. Amen. I know you've been prayed for for healing, but I encourage you to come again and get prayed for for Amen. healing. Yeah. I don't know what you need victory over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But see, but the Lord just says, "Come." Amen. So. As an evangelist, I, I often wonder, what, what do apostolic people need to come? Do they need the fast song? Do they need the drums beaten? Do they need a Sunday night? <laughs> Folks, we're here on Thursday night now. But he's still <laughs> the I am. Yes, yeah. he is. Yes. He is. Whatever God can do, he can do on Thursday oh, yes. night. Yes. In the middle of a snowstorm, God can do it. <laughs> One of the best little sayings I heard. Knock, doubt, no, doubt not. Faith answered. And there was no one there. <laughs> so if doubt is knocking, let your faith answer it. There should be no one there. Hallelujah. With whom the Lord was grieved with Israel. Angry! Because they said, can God, can God? I want you to know God can, God will. 
and God does. Let's stand and let's raise our hands and let's worship the God who cannot lie right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let your presence God fill this place right now, Lord Jesus. All oh, that send your anointing right now, Lord God. Send forth your word, God, in our hearts right now, Jesus. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, let your spirit move upon us, O oh God. Breathe upon us right now, O oh God. Breathe upon us, O oh God. Oh God. Oh God. We're going to close this service by inviting us to cover it all. Number one, don't go home with an empty net. Put your net in the water one more time. How many messages of faith did you hear before you will come? How many words? Oh, thank you for your presence. Thank you. I wish you were more dynamic. I wish you would twist and dance a little bit. Just speak the word Wonderful all Lord Jesus. Yes. The Praise your holy name, Lord Jesus. Jesus. I'm gonna come. Show so us. as many people as we have here tonight, we could have that many circumstances, that many needs, that no many situations. But he's El Shaddai, he's the all sufficient one. Hallelujah, he's omnipotent, omniscient, and he's omnipresent. Hallelujah. So, as this man plays, we're going to sing a song. Amen. Don't let doubt and fear, unbelief, hold you in that peace. Wonderful. Well, I believe it. I heard the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Spirit of God. Let's sing this in your body. This is the time. Need the Holy Ghost. This is the time. You need to be renewed. This is the time. Hallelujah. It's a sad time. It's a sad time. It's a sad time. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't just see it. Taste it for yourself. Amen. 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 Amen